So today we're going to be continuing to look at the alternate future of the world season two. In the previous alternate future of the world, we saw that Japan had a ginormous civil war and essentially collapsed into itself. And now they're only secluded to their own island. So kind of like how they are in real life. We also saw that colonies around the world were released. So there are no longer any colonies in the world. It is only countries. And yeah, so if you guys do enjoy this video, make sure to show some support by leaving a like on it, subscribing to the channel if you're new or leaving a comment with your input. You can also share the video with anyone who might be interested and yeah let's go ahead and jump straight into this scenario so at the end of the previous video i did talk about how there was trouble brewing in europe with the axis looking to gear up and go to war with somebody well that somebody has been revealed and it appears that they are going to be going to war with the mediterranean order and the reason they're doing this is because it's their weakest target now you could go after the allies and honestly they would have a pretty fair shot at getting control over mainland europe but when it comes to fighting against the us and canada as well as the uk and honestly just different parts of the world I don't think the Axis wants that beef. However, the Mediterranean order is fairly concentrated over here in this area. We know Italy is right here and taking out Italy basically guarantees victory, but there's also Ukraine, Romania, Bulgaria, and Egypt and Libya and Ethiopia. So yeah, the Axis will gear up and go to war with them. Now the reasoning of course is going to be non-existent. Uh, that tends to be the thing with these aggressive countries. But nonetheless, the Axis declares war on the Mediterranean order, and this is a full-scale war, so all the Axis members are joining this and fighting along with Germany and Belarus and Spain. I don't know why I said Belarus, they're basically a puppet state. Uh, but yeah, Italy's going to have their hands full here because there is also over here in the Western Hemisphere, Mexico and Nicaragua. And of course, the Mediterranean order has been getting friendly with the Allies as of lately, but unfortunately for them, the Allies aren't they're not as close as they need to be for them to join the war on their side so they will refrain from joining this war and honestly that could be a big factor in who wins because germany is strong as hell there's no doubt about that look how much land they have but they also are going up against strong countries like italy and ukraine and egypt so fighting starts of course as soon as the war breaks out uh the uh the mediterranean order and the allies have known about germany's buildup and the axis is built up as a whole and they've had time to prepare for it however they are still going to get swatted around real quick they easily push in and take over the croat parts of italy and now move down the balkan coast eventually cutting them off over here in montenegro from here the entire balkan coast falls and this is a pretty big uh, blow for italy now there are a lot of naval ports along this coast and you could say that they're holding out and they most likely are holding out However, due to the fact that the inland is gone, it is likely that these ports are going to be evacuated and moved over toward the coast of Italy. And that's because a large number of German troops could just move in and take the ports and also on all of the supplies. So they're likely transporting stuff across the Adriatic Sea. Up north, though, we do see a, uh, a special forces Italian group go into the Alp Mountains and secure a little bit of the land. Now, of course, the Alp Mountains are hard to invade, so I don't expect them to do too much. Over here, we see Ukraine start their invasion of Belarus. Um, this is a pretty good matchup for Ukraine because they are a lot stronger than Belarus. As for down here in the Balkans, Romania and Bulgaria will work together to claim lands within Germany, although they're not going to be going too far because the Germans are here. Back over in Italy, we have the uh, the Italian special forces actually breaking through the Alpine mountains and making up into mainland Europe, aka Austria. And this is where Germany is going to start to re-strategize, you know. The special forces, they're not going to do much on their own. They're mainly just used to take over very harsh geographical regions. However, with this with them having this corridor, uh, Italy can easily send troops through here, up into here, and then make a push inland. So uh, Germany's going to want to stop that from happening. And they will kind of regroup their armies a little bit to curve off this little bulge that they're creating. Italy knows they're going to do this and they're going to take advantage by going down south and taking back some parts of Croatia. But elsewhere, we have Germany making up ground as they push back Bulgarian forces and enter into Bulgaria as a whole. The Kosovan part of Italy is taken over and Albania is short to fall after. However, due to the close naval proximity of the Italian Navy, this invasion does not last long as the troops are pretty much bombarded out of Albania. As for Bulgaria though, they aren't as lucky as the troops move in and start to get near to Sofia. Romania is doing a pretty good job holding their own. Um, they definitely want Transylvania back. And for Ukraine, they're doing amazingly. Uh, they're getting close to Minsk. 
However, though, we do see the Germans start to push into this half of Ukraine, and this is going to be pretty painful for them as they've been working hard to take out Belarus. And of course, this wouldn't be a fun war without the third party, right? So Russia, the Russian Republic, will go ahead and join in on this war. And their main primary goal here, main primary goal, their main goal here is to take back what they lost, aka parts of Belarus. They're not worried about Ukraine because, you know, that would start hands with the Mediterranean order. And hence, that would kind of lead to them having to throw hands with the allies because, you know, the Mediterranean order and the allies are starting to get friendly with each other. But with the Axis, you know, if everyone jumps in, we could definitely just take down the Axis right now. So Russia joins the war and Russian troops start to move into Belarusian territory at a very high rate. Now, of course, Russia does have the advantage here because they're only fighting a one front war. It's not like, you know, they're fighting a two front or maybe three front war like the Germans and Belarusians are. And also it's important to note that Russia as a whole is not very strong. They just kind of exploded a few episodes ago. So what they're doing here is basically just it's luck and just taking advantage of a weaker opponent. And with the Russians like swarming in from the north, Ukraine is able to take a lot of land as well, even meeting up with the Russians up north near Minsk. And eventually what we have here is a race to take as much land as possible as the Russians and the Ukrainians basically just flatline out towards Germany. Now there is one tiny issue and that issue is Finland. Now Finland could get involved with this war, However, as of recently within their country, they've started to take a more neutral approach with the ramping up of alliances across the world. As you can see, there are quite a lot and there's not very many neutral countries left. And before this, Finland was very Axis aligned. However, due to the uh, bad things that the Axis has been doing and the constant war rampage that they've been going on, Finland and their people have been moving away from an Axis aligned future and instead have gone towards a more neutral approach. Now, I wouldn't say that they're necessarily allied to the Allies or the Mediterranean Order or anyone for that matter. They would still favor the Axis, but they're not at a point anymore where they would join a war on their side. So they will set this war out um, there is definitely an opportunity for them to take out Russia. I think Finland would probably win that war due to the fact that once again, Russia exploded recently. But due to, uh, you know, their people not wanting this war and their leaders also not really wanting this war, they will stay out. And that's a huge blow to the Axis because Finland joining would probably be a game changer. Speaking of game changers, a civil war just popped up in our little friendly uh, Central American country known as Nicaragua. Yeah, real friendly. They're totally not fascist or anything. What we have here is legions of troops who are in favor of a democratic government that joins the League of Freedom. And uh, ironically enough, they're all mostly focused in on the borders of the League of Freedom countries, which surround it, like uh, Guatemala and Costa Rica. Uh, the League of Freedom denies any involvement with the Civil War. However, the Axis is going to go ahead and accuse them of it anyway. And uh, I don't really think they want to throw hands with the League of Freedom because... Well, first of all, the League of Freedom isn't necessarily a war alliance. It's more of a neutral alliance, just kind of pushing to make the world a better place and strives for stability within countries, which is part of the reason why uh, the Axis is kind of suspicious of the League of Freedom for tampering with any kind of rebellion. But nonetheless, the League of Freedom denies it and the Axis will you know, focus on the civil war instead. Now, Mexico is going to do their best to send supplies down to Nicaragua. However, these rebellions have hands and uh, the Nicaraguan government is essentially overthrown by their own people. And uh, an independence is declared from the access by the new Nicaraguan government. And the access is going to say, no, you can't do that. But they can because they're their own country now. Mexico will try to do something about this, but invading Guatemala would probably not be good because if they did that, um, you know, you're invading a neutral alliance who has done nothing wrong, but you know, they've been really good to the world. They've done good things for each other. Invading one of those countries is probably going to get you backlash from like the allies, more specifically the United States, who probably wants to keep the Americas as, I don't want to say secured, but as neutral and not war wise, war wise, not aggressive. They don't want war in the Americas. And the only thing stopping that from happening is Mexico and Nicaragua. So with the uprising in Nicaragua, that would only leave Mexico. And if Mexico were to take an aggressive approach, the United States would probably step in to finally end any kind of aggression in the Americas. So yeah, Mexico, I mean, they can use their Navy, but honestly, it's probably not gonna work. Nicaragua declares their independence from the access and Mexico will go ahead and just kind of ignore it from any kind of other interference. Back over in Europe though, war the italians and the bulgarians make a stride to push back the germans from their invasion and they do pretty well however they are unable to completely push them out of the country and it's getting to the point where it's kind of stalemating now the germans they will go on offense in belarus but they don't see much value in taking the whole country back because they didn't really do much anyway so that advance will stall uh taking out ukraine would be kind of big so they do go after it a little bit but ukraine does clamp down on defense 
the Italian special forces are essentially stopping any advance from um, the uh, Germans. So yeah, stalemate. But uh, remember how I was talking about earlier how the Allies and the Mediterranean Order weren't very close? Well, if we take a look at the world map, right? Okay, there's, I don't, well, I was going to say there's not clearly a bad side, but there is very clearly a bad side being the Axis. Uh, you have friendly alliances like the Mediterranean Order, the Allies, the League of Freedom, and the new Chinese League, which just popped up, which, you know, it doesn't have any alliance. I would assume if they did, though, it would be towards, like, the League of Freedom because they were oppressed by Japan for years. But anyway, as I was saying, all these alliances are friendly with each other. There's not, like, there's a lot of bitterness, and the only bitterness comes from the Axis and the Central Asian Order. Is that what I called it? Central Asian Axis, something like that. So, in reality, taking out those last two alliances would be very big because, you know, you would get rid of the aggressive alliances and you would only have alliances which are friendly with each other, leading to a more peaceful future, maybe. So the Allies do see this. You know, the Allies have been gearing up, not for necessarily for war, but for a necessary invasion. Because if you remember, uh, they didn't know what Germany was going to do. They could have invaded the Allies for all they know, but now knowing that they were going after the Mediterranean order, uh, the Allies have had times to prepare for any possible counter offensive should the Mediterranean order fall. Now that's what they were preparing for. They were just, you know, preparing for worst case scenario because if the Axis did beat the Mediterranean order, we would see uh, a very powerful Germany and that Germany would be capable of taking down the Allies and they don't want that. So once again, the Allies have been preparing and uh, now that the war has become very stalemate-ish, uh, they're going to go ahead and strike. Now, the Allies, they don't necessarily have the people support in this war. It's not very popular among the public, but it is very divided in terms of who supports it and who doesn't. So people who support it, they are all for the cause of ending world war forever. People who are against it are very against sending troops across seas, you know, having millions die for just some stupid central war. So yeah, the opinions do differ a lot. So the Allies officially joined the war and this is not looking too good for the Axis. They are now completely surrounded on all sides. Uh, Mexico is about to get bodied by the US. Um, well, Morocco, who is owned by Spain, is probably about to get some freedom. Portugal is probably about to one piece up Spain along with Catalonia. And France and the UK and Italy are probably going to body Germany now. Sweden probably is going to go ahead and take over Norway. So that could be a small cost. But when you look at the world map, the Allies clearly have the advantage, even more so with the Mediterranean order at their side. So let the official war begin. French troops start to pour into what was once the Benelux lands, and German troops are quick to put up a defense Although they do lose a lot of land before that happens. Down south, like I said, Portugal starts to piece up Spain. And uh, even Catalonia does as well. Now France, they're not going to go on the offensive here. They're too busy worrying about Germany. And the UK is sending troops to Norway and France. With this big distraction over here in the west, Ukraine is able to fully push back the Germans out of their borders. And really, this is going to start the end to the access, or at least their reign of terror sweden takes advantage of a weak norway and takes over oslo pretty much crippling the country they focus on the coastal areas and coastal defense which will help them from any kind of british support which may or may not have been coming the germans will work on a counteroffensive in france and switzerland and uh well switzerland's gonna sound an alarm here saying hey protect us you're gonna regret it if you don't so they do exactly that and they are able to protect Switzerland. What? Alternate future lore? Speaking of alternate future lore, if you want to see the end to this series, show support on this video by leaving a like, subscribing, commenting, and most importantly, sharing it with someone who might be interested. If you're not caught up with the series, go catch up. But if you're not caught up, why are you watching this video? This is just spoilers. Anyway, Germany's had enough. They're, they're pushing back the French. They're not able to fully push them back, but they do do a good job in reaching the French border. And uh, I think we should check on Mexico. Oh. Oh, that's not good. And uh, to make it worse, you know, I mean, obviously Mexico is not going to beat the United States. Uh, remember those Nicaraguan rebels? Well, they weren't Nicaraguan. They turns out they were League of Freedom supported. Who would have guessed? And uh, those rebels start to rise up in the Yucatan area of Mexico until eventually they pretty much break away from Mexico as a whole. And uh, these rebels also start to rise up near the Americans, and this will help them out tremendously. Having these little pockets of rebels allows for the Americans to move through these pockets, set up troops, and counter-invade the Mexicans. Well, I guess not counter-invade, but just invade the Mexicans. So yeah, Mexico looks like it has some sort of STD, maybe? I don't know. They don't look good, though. Back over in Europe, Spain. Oh boy, your time has come. They're pretty much overwhelmed in all ways, you know, with them also losing land to Algeria in the south, even losing their 
I mean, just access to the land from the Mediterranean, uh, they're pretty much going to collapse. Turns out fascism isn't a good ideology, and uh, the people don't really like it too much. So they lose Madrid over to Portugal, and from there, they essentially surrender over. And just makes Germany very angry. So what does Germany do? Well, they're going to go ahead and blitz the French out of their country. Get out of here. And instead, they're going to flip the narrative and start to invade France. And France is like, whoa, 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 we need help. Please help us. And the British are like, you know, I don't know where I'm going with this. The British are going to help them, obviously. They're on the same team. And the Allies are also going to go ahead and pressure the Mediterranean Order into, like, you know, pushing the Germans back because they haven't done a good job of that. So the Mediterranean Order finally does its job and pushes back against the Germans, retaking all of their lost lands. And from here, they start their invasion of the Balkan area. That includes into Serbia and Bosnia and any lost parts of Romania. And overall, they're doing a very good job and the Allies are pleased. With Germany on the uh, collapse, essentially, uh, they're gonna go ahead and try to get peace out of this, but the Allies and the Mediterranean order, they're not having any of that. The Russians also, they're involved in this war still. They're gonna take the rest of Belarus and push into the Baltic area, taking over Estonia and parts of Latvia before officially signing an agreement with the Germans saying that they will nope their way out. Um, just don't push back and uh, yeah deal the swedes who have been doing a very good job in pulling their weight in this war officially take out norway and by that i mean they take over all the lands that isn't mountain so a good portion of it and i guess you could say that the norwegians would you know fight back in the mountains but for the sake of the map norway completely falls over to them and at this point sweden is going to go ahead and start to bargain with the allies saying hey let us out of this war we will leave the access we will better ourselves uh just sign us a little bit of norway and the allies they consider it but uh, before they officially agree to that statement, they're going to go ahead and see what they can do to Germany. Because, you know, taking out Germany basically wins the war, no matter what Sweden says. Also, I remember in the last video, my game, I have like a knob on the back of my microphone that has, I can't reach it, gain right there. So if I like turn this all the way up, it gets really, really distorted. I apologize for your ears. Yeah, that got turned up in the last video. So yeah, like I said, I apologize for that, but I fixed it now. All right, so Germany is, uh, they're, they're losing their front in the south to the Mediterranean order. There's a just a little too many factors going on. Uh, but we also see the uh, Central Asian Alliance join this war against the Mediterranean order. Oh, sorry, did I catch you off guard? Yeah, my bad. Uh, but they're not, they're not fighting a war against the Allies. They're only fighting a war against the Mediterranean order, meaning that they're only going against like Italy and Egypt. They're not at war with the Allies, meaning they're not going to invade this, they're not going to invade the Caucasian Union, and they're not going to be invading the Strip owned by Egypt. And this completely catches the uh, Mediterranean order off guard, and uh, Israel is taken over by Saudi Arabia. And the Turks move to take back land that they lost to Italy, taking back the Lebanon area and various coastal areas before the Italian Navy and army is, is able to completely lock them down. Germany sees this as an opportunity to maybe push back, um, but that doesn't work. And they completely flaw their offensive and lose all ground in France. Uh, we should also probably check in on Mexico. So let's see how, the oh, they're gone. Okay. Anyway, Germany's going to get pieced up now. Um, they're really not doing too well. Switzerland is very happy that this is happening because they see this as a step to officially end world war and to, uh, you know, have a future without any war. And uh, they believe taking down the Axis will, you know, be the first step of two to end that. They might be right and they might be wrong. In a way, Germany on its last breath will once again try to do one last ginormous counter invasion, uh, except the counter invasion completely flops and it doesn't even work. They're eventually secluded back to their mainlands, which of is in Germany. There is a slight holdout over here in Latvia slash Lithuania, but the Allies, now with the force of American and British troops, are able to completely dismantle this part of Germany, and uh, they eventually reach Berlin. The Mediterranean order cleans up the rest of the southern area, and Germany no longer exists. It's basically now just Sweden and Denmark. Sweden, of course, is being smart, will go ahead and surrender over to the Allies, and now it's the Mediterranean order versus the uh the central asian alliance but the mediterranean order is gassed from this war they have all their assets over here they only have defensive assets over here so they will go ahead and sit down with the central asian alliance and draw up some sort of peace treaty so that war also ends as well so now we can go ahead and take a look at the overall peace treaty of this war all right so let's go ahead and break down this ginormous peace treaty so Starting off in the Americas, I think this is the best place to start because, you know, left to right, unless you're like in Asia where it's right to left. Anyway, I don't even know what I'm going on about. Uh, Mexico, they actually, they get away pretty okay. Um, the Americans, of course, are going to go ahead and take their little bit of uh, land. 
that being Baja, California, and a little bit of the coastal areas up north and the Yucatan Peninsula. The rest of it is given over to the rebels who go ahead and form their new government and join the League of Freedom. So Mexico is now a member of that alliance as well as Nicaragua, so they didn't lose any land. They just form a new government and join the League of Freedom. Now over to Europe, where we have the most interesting changes here. And honestly, it's looking a little bit messy, and that's because a lot of countries just came back. Germany's defeat pretty much just revived Central Europe. Um, because before that, it didn't exist. It was just Germany. Starting up north, Sweden got out of this war without losing anything, and the reason they got uh, out without losing anything is because they took over all of Norway, and part of the compromise was basically you give up Norway and you live, and Sweden agreed to that. Now, starting over here in the Iberian Peninsula, Portugal got, gets a big piece of land, and that is all from Spain. We see a new Spanish government being formed in what was Spain, and then just a new random country up here. Uh, Catalonia expands down the coast, and France gets a tiny bit of land as well. Moving over into to northern Africa, we see that Algeria gets a lot of the Moroccan co a colony. Um, Morocco as a country now exists, so they're free from Spain. And then we have Western Sahara also being released. Uh, Algeria now gains access to the Atlantic Ocean, and honestly, they have chance. They have a pretty good chance to become a powerful country. Going over to Central Europe now, Germany essentially blew up. Uh, this is what they looked like before, and this is what they look like now. So you can see the transition from having a lot of land to not a lot of land. Czechoslovakia, Poland, Austria, Hungary, and Serbia are all released from Germany, and the Mediterranean Order takes its fair share of land from these places as well as germany we see that russia gets exactly what they wanted all of belarus well not all of it but a majority of belarus and a good portion of land in estonia and latvia now for the final area coming down here to the middle east this is where it's interesting because if we remember the uh the central asian alliance they did take their fair bit of land from the mediterranean order and that was at the end of the war when they were weak and didn't want to fight anymore. So the Mediterranean order essentially just caved into them. Um, but we do see that Turkey gets almost all of their land back and, except for this coastal area. And honestly, if I'm Turkey, I'm happy with that because you also get Lebanon as well. And the other change is Saudi Arabia getting pretty much all of Israel except for this one little slither of land. I don't know why, but Egypt was able to keep that. And other than that, nothing changes much. So now we're going to go ahead and zoom out and take a look at the alliance map. And as we can see here... That's the wrong map. But as we can see here, the world has drastically changed. The Mediterranean order is becoming a very large alliance, as well as the League of Freedom. And the Allies have, they really didn't expand too much from that war. Now, given there are a few countries which were just released that are will probably end up joining their alliance soon. But if we go ahead and flip back and forth between the two alliance maps, you can see before and you can see after. So the Axis essentially exploded. Not much change in the Americas, but going zooming into Europe, we can see that before, after. Germany lost a lot of land and uh, Belarus and Spain, they don't even exist anymore in the Axis. Sweden is the only country that pretty much remained unchanged. So that's good for them. But other than that, uh, yeah, quite a bit of change here. There's also some uh, border resolutions that happened uh, between Romania and Bulgaria. Now, it wasn't perfect, but they were able to figure some stuff out, which was weird before. Same thing with Romania and Ukraine. Now, this piece of land was owned by Ukraine but it was exchanged over to Romania in order for the sake of keeping what the old border was. Um, you know, and Romania is slowly starting to rebuild what they once were. And of course, they still had a lot of land to south of what they have now. But I think they're content with what they got because they got Transylvania back. And uh, yeah, in the next alternate future video, we will look at some of these neutral countries which just got released and who they might end up joining. I probably got to do some touch-ups on this map. But yeah, the Axis loses the war and uh, Europe looks very different now. And this will probably shift the momentum of the series into something that might be a little bit more interesting with a very friendly world with not a lot of wars and that doesn't mean there's going to be less war scenarios but that does mean that the war scenarios will be become more interesting maybe there'll be some backstabbing and stuff like that so if you guys do want to see a continuation of this series and want to see more alternate future of the world videos uh make sure to show some support on this video you can do that in a lot of ways liking subscribing sharing this series with a new friend or something like that, leaving a comment with your input. All that stuff is really appreciated. If you want to become a channel member, you can do that and get early access to these videos. I upload every day at 11 a.m., but if you're a member, you can get access to the video as soon as 12 hours earlier. Uh, usually that's when I upload my videos, so you guys get access like 12 hours early, and then you get the actual video for the public. So if you want to be early, leave your first comment. I'll probably end up seeing those comments before all the other comments come in. Then uh, feel free to become a member of the channel. I don't know the pricing. I'm, I'm a failed creator. But yeah, once again, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.
And of course, thank you to all the super fans, which include Matthew Newman, Yem Yem, Kali Speaks Plays, Shadow Gamer Z, Deva Edits, Mr. Bonk7, Hammer Toad45, Patrick Clauser, Connor the Gamer, Texan Cowboy Cheese, Poland Country Ball, Yakko, Nevada Garbage Trucks, DW Cool Dude, Soviet Ball, and Serminator. Once again, thank you guys.